Okay, today I want to just uh, uh, give you a brief demonstration of how we can solve for a reaction system using different methods besides the extent of reaction. We have used uh, extent of reaction in class, and there's plenty of examples out there to using extent of reaction, and we'll, most often times we'll use the extent, extent of reaction, but it's not the only way that we can solve a system. So let me just start out with a reactor. Um, we have here H2O2 coming in, H2O2 and H2O coming out, and we'll have a reaction take place here. So this is our reaction in our system taking place here. So let me just put that up there. So that's our system. And we can go ahead and solve this. We may be given information about the inputs. We may be given some information about the outputs. And we can use extended reaction to solve this. But there are other ways. So let me just uh, write out the first one. And this is using a material balance equation, similar to what we've done earlier in the term. But also, it's, it's detailed in chapter four of the book. But there's this equation input push generation minus consumption equals output. So there's, this is just the generic material balance equation for a given uh, species. So this, we might be able to do this um, equation for um, hydrogen. We might do it for oxygen or we might do it for water. So in the case of hydrogen, we have some input hydrogen coming in. We don't have a con generation, but instead we have some hydrogen being consumed according to this reaction. And that equals the amount of output of hydrogen. Water, for instance, we don't have any input, but we do have some generation, no consumption for water. So whatever is produced in this reactor for water, the output for water is due to generation. So we can write out a material balance uh, for this if we know information about generation and consumption to solve for what's going in for the reactor and what's coming out. So that's one method. Let me explain to you another method, and this is using atomic balances. So, atomic balances. So when we have this reaction reactor right here, it is definitely not true that the amount of moles of one of the reactants or products e N is equal to going out. So N H2 N does not equal N H oops, if I can write this H2 out. That's because we have a reaction taking place. So the number of moles of H2 is changing. We could also write a similar uh, reaction um, equation here for O2 and water. The amount of moles of oxygen, the amount of moles of, of water coming in and out are not the same for each other. Instead, we know that this is true, that the uh, number of moles, let's uh, number of moles of a at atomic species, the number of atoms, is however constant. So number of hydrogen in is equal to number of hydrogen out. Number of oxygen in is equal to number oxygen out. So in other words, the number of hydrogen atoms coming in is equal to the number of hydrogens leaving the reactor. The number of oxygen atoms going in is equal to the number of oxygen atoms leaving the reactor. So that holds true because we're not dealing here with nuclear reactions, but we're dealing with chemical reactions, so the number of atoms going in and out must be constant. Um, so how do, we, how do we actually write that out in terms of um, reactions, equations, and so forth that we can use? Well, we can use uh, balances on hydrogen and oxygen. So let's write out the amount of uh, hydrogen coming in. That is equal to the amount of H2 coming in. And then we have to take into account the stoichiometric ratio, but there's one mole of, or two moles of hydrogen atom per mole of hydrogen gas. And this is where it gets tricky. We just need to be careful. When we say hydrogen, we could be referring to H2 or we could be referring to hydrogen. We just need to be specific on that. Um, so the number of moles of hydrogen atoms coming in is equal to the number of moles of H2 coming in multiplied by this ratio here, which is just determined by the stoichiometry of the molecule. And then the number of uh, hydrogen out 
is an H2 out times 2 moles H per mole of H2. But then we have plus number of H2 out times 2 moles hydrogen per mole of H2O. So that's the balance, or that tells us how much hydrogen is coming out of the system. Um, so in this case, um, we have the number of H2 coming in, number of H2 coming out, and the number of H2O coming out. These might be variables that we're trying to solve for. So we may be trying to solve for um, the number of um, molecules of, of hydrogen, H2 coming in or out, or the amount of H2O coming out of the system or produced. So we can, if we're doing an atomic balance, we know that H2, Hn is equal to H out, so those two are equivalent to each other, which means this right here is equal to this, and then we can maybe solve for some variables that are uh, unknown uh, for our system. Now, we can go ahead and we can write out a similar equation. Let me just put this over here. So we can write out here similar uh, numbers or, or similar equations, excuse me, for oxygen. Oxygen atom, N-O-N, is equal to N-O-2-N times 2 moles oxygen per mole O2. So we also can write out NO out is equal to NO2 out times 2 moles O per mole of O2 plus NH2O out times, this is where it's getting, my screen's getting a little uh, hard here to write, mole of oxygen per mole H2O. And so that's our equations that we would have um, for these. Let me go ahead and move this here. So we have our equations now uh, written out for all of the different um, atomic species balances. So just like when we did uh, material balances previously, we may use these equations to solve for unknowns that may be um, that we may need to find. So this is again an alternative way to solve a reaction system is where we instead of writing out balances on the molecular species which are changing we write out balances on the atoms themselves and we know that in the case of atoms the number of atoms of is, is not changing in versus out so number of hydrogen going in must be out number of oxygen going in must be out and we might use a setup like these, equations like these, to help us solve for our unknown variables. So that's it, the atomic balance way to solve.